Good morning, everyone. Our readings for this morning are Psalms 23 and 24. The Old Testament reading is from the book of Isaiah, chapter 5, verses 8 through 12, and then 18 through 23. And the New Testament reading is from the First Thessalonians 5, verses 1 through 11. In the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. We've come together as the family of God in our Father's presence to offer him praise and thanksgiving, to hear and receive his holy word, to bring before him the needs of the world, to ask his forgiveness for our sins, and to seek his grace, that through his Son, Jesus Christ, we may give ourselves to his service. So let us worship and praise him. Lord, Open our lips that we may glorify and praise your name. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be for ever. Amen. O oh, come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us shout in triumph to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before his face with thanksgiving, and cry out to him joyfully in psalms. For the Lord is a great God, and a great King above all gods. In his hand are the depths of the earth, and the peaks of the mountains are his also. The sea is his, and he made it. His hands moulded dry land. Come, let us worship and bow down and kneel before the Lord our Maker. For he is the Lord our God. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. If only you could hear his voice today, for he comes. He comes to judge the earth. He shall judge the world with righteousness and the peoples with his truth. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and will be forever. Amen. So let us call to mind and confess our sins. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, in penitence we confess that we have sinned against you through our own fault, in thought, word, and deed, and in what we have left undone. For the sake of your Son, Christ our Lord, forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may serve you in newness of life to the glory of your name. So Almighty God, have mercy on us, Forgive us our sins and keep us in eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And we read Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil, and my cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Psalm 24, the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof, the world and all those who dwell therein. For he has founded it upon the seas and established it upon the rivers. Who shall ascend the hill of the Lord and who shall stand in his holy place? He who has clean hands and a pure heart and does not lift up his soul to what is false and does not swear deceitfully. And righteousness from the Lord, he will receive blessing from the Lord and righteousness from the God of his salvation. Such is the generation of those who seek him and who seek the face of the God of Jacob. Selah. Lift up your heads, O gates, and be lifted up, O ancient doors, that the King of glory may come in. Who is the King of glory? The Lord, strong and mighty, the Lord, mighty in battle. Lift up your heads, O gates, and lift them up, O ancient doors, 
that the King of Glory may come in. Who is this King of Glory? The Lord of Hosts. He is the King of Glory. Selah. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. And our first reading is from Isaiah chapter 5. <clears throat> Woe to those who join house to house, who add field to field, until there's no more room, and you are made to dwell alone in the midst of the land. The Lord of hosts has sworn in my hearing, surely many houses shall be desolate, large and beautiful houses without inhabitant. For ten acres of vineyard shall yield but one bath, and a homer of seed shall yield but one ephah. Woe to those who rise early in the morning, that they may run after strong drink, who tarry late into the evening as wine inflames them. They have lyre and harp, tambourine and flute, and wine at their feasts. But they do not regard the deeds of the Lord, or seek the work of his hands. Woe to those who draw iniquity with cords of falsehood, who draw sin with a uh, cart with, ro uh, with ropes, who say, Let us be quick, let us speed his work, that we may see it. Let the counsel of the Holy One of Israel draw near, and let, the, let it come, that we may know it. Woe to those who call evil good and good evil, who put darkness for light, light for darkness, who put bitter for sweet, and sweet for bitter. Woe to those who are wise in their own eyes and shrewd in their own sight. Woe to those who are heroes at drinking wine and valiant men in mixing strong drink, who acquit the guilty with a bribe and deprive the innocent of his right. Hear the word of the Lord. And we read the song of Zechariah. Blessed is the God of Israel, for he has looked favourably on his people and redeemed them raised up for us a mighty saviour in the house of his servant David, as he spoke through the mouth of his holy prophets of old, that we would be saved from our enemies and from the hand of all who hate us. <clears throat> Thus he has shown the mercy promised to our ancestors and has remembered his holy covenant, an oath that he swore to our ancestor Abraham to grant us that we, being rescued from the hands of our enemies, might serve him without fear, in holiness and righteousness before him all our days. And you, my child, will be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare his ways, to give knowledge of salvation to his people by the forgiveness of their sins. By the tender mercy of our God, the dawn from on high will break upon us to give light to those who sit in darkness and in the shadow of death, to guide our feet in the way of peace. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be for ever. Amen. And our New Testament reading is from the first letter, Paul's first letter to the Thessalonians. Chapter 5, starting at verse 1. Now, concerning the times and the seasons, brothers, you have no need to have anything written for, to you, for you yourselves are fully aware that the day of the Lord will come like a thief in the night. While people are saying, there is no peace and security, then sudden destruction will come upon them as labor pains come on a pregnant woman, and they will not escape. But you are not in darkness, brothers, for that, day to, uh, for that day to surprise you like a thief. For you are all children of light, children of the day. We are not of the night or of darkness. So then let us not sleep as others do, but let us keep awake and sober. For those who sleep, sleep at night, and those who get drunk are drunk at night. But since we belong to the day, let us be sober, having put on the breastplate of faith and love and a helmet, the, and for a helmet the hope of salvation. 
For God has not destined us for wrath, but to obtain salvation through our Lord Jesus Christ, who died for us so that whether we are awake or asleep, we might live with him. Therefore, encourage one another to build and build one another up, just as you are doing. Hear the word of the Lord. And we read Canticle number one. May you be blessed, Lord God of our Father, Israel, from creation and forever. Yours is the greatness, Lord, and the power and glory, the splendor and the majesty, for everything in heaven and on earth are yours. Yours is the sovereignty, Lord, and you are exalted as head above, above all. From you come riches and honor, and you rule over all things. Is in your hands lie strength and power, and yours it is to give greatness and strength to all. And now, our God, we give you thanks and praise. We praise the splendor of your name. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. the words of my mouth and the meditations of all our hearts be pleasing to you, our Lord and our Redeemer. Paul exhorts us to be children of the light. Just what does this mean? Let's start by looking at what it means not to be children of the light. The Old Testament reading gives us a clear lead into how God <coughs> sees those who are not children of children of the light but does God mean all he says a couple of examples from the biblical history will serve to demonstrate that point <coughs> on more than one occasion God has wiped out whole populations of folk who did not follow him or who threatened his chosen people. When the children of Israel left Egypt, they were pursued by the Egyptians, and God took a hand in their successful escape, as we read in Psalm 135. <coughs> he it was who struck down the firstborn of Egypt, both of man and of beast. Who in your midst, O Egypt, sent signs and wonders against Pharaoh and all his servants? Who struck down many nations and killed mighty kings, Sihon king of the Amorites, and Og king of Bashan, and all the kingdoms of Canaan, and gave their land as a heritage, a heritage to the people of Israel? But, you say, that is all Old Testament. Jesus is a God of love. Yes, you are perfectly right to say that. But look at what he said in the towns where Jesus did much of his work, but the people did not believe him. Woe to you, Chorazin! Woe to you, Bethsaida! For if the mighty works done in you had been done in Tyre and Sidon, they would have repented long ago, sitting in sackcloth and ashes. But it will be more bearable in the judgment for Tyre and Sidon than for you. And you, Capernaum, Will you be exalted in heaven? You shall be brought down to Hades. The ruins of all three, these three towns may be seen today, and the ruins of Capernaum are a popular tourist attraction. But those who belong to the day, who believe in Jesus, will live with him. And it's the same today. There are two sides to God which seem initially to oppose each other. On the one hand, he is the judge and has already passed judgment on those who do not accept him as Lord and Saviour. But on the other hand, he will shelter those who have accepted him as their Lord and Saviour, and these folk will be with him into eternity. In the parable of the final judgment in Matthew 25, we read how God 
the judge, will separate people one from another as a shepherd separates sheep from goats, and he will place the sheep on his right and the goats on his left. Then the king will say to those on his right, that is, those who accepted Jesus as their saviour, Come, you who are blessed by my Father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. And to the goats on his left, which are those who did not accept Jesus as their Saviour, he will say, Depart from me, you cursed, into the eternal fire prepared for the devil and his angels. In the final judgment, I don't expect we will see God the Saviour, but I expect we will see God the judge. The sheep on the right will inherit uh, the kingdom of God has prepared for them, while the goats on the left will not. And we say the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead and ascended into heaven. And he sits on the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. So let us pray. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. And we say the Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. The collect for today. <clears throat> God of timeless grace, you fill us with joyful expectation. Make us ready for the message that prepares the way, so that the uprightness of heart and holy joy we may eagerly await the kingdom of your Son, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Calling Christ's saving work. By the mystery of your holy incarnation, by your birth, childhood, and obedience, and by your baptism, fasting, and temptation, and the phrase at the end of each of these paragraphs is, Good Lord, deliver us. By your ministry and word and work, by your mighty acts of power, and by your proclamation of the kingdom, Good Lord, deliver us. By your agony and sweat of blood, by your cross and passion, by your precious death and burial, good Lord, deliver us. By your mighty resurrection and your glorious ascension, and by the coming of the Holy Spirit, good Lord, deliver us. In all times of trial and sorrow, in all times of joy and prosperity, in the hour of death and in the day of judgment, good Lord, deliver us. And we pray for people according to their needs. And the phrase at the end of each paragraph is, Hear us, good Lord. T. 
teach us to use the resources of the earth to your glory, that all may share in your goodness and praise you for your loving kindness. Hear us, good Lord. Enlighten with your spirit all who teach and all who learn. Hear us, good Lord. Help us comfort the lonely and the aged, the bereaved, the overworked, the exploited and the oppressed. Hear us, good Lord. Support and encourage all who are <clears throat> in poverty, unemployment or distress. Protect those whose work is dangerous and keep them in safety, all who travel. Hear us, good Lord. Keep fathers, mothers and children united in their family life and give them wisdom and strength in times of stress. Hear us, good Lord. Heal the sick in mind and body. Strengthen and preserve all women and children in childbirth and all young children. Hear us, good Lord. Defend and provide for all the widowed and the orphaned, all migrant workers and refugees, the homeless and the victims of strife. Have pity on prisoners and all who live in fear. Hear us, good Lord. Forgive our enemies, persecutors and slanderers and turn their hearts. Hear us, good Lord. Holy God, holy and strong, holy and immortal, have mercy on us. So may the Lord bless us and keep us. The Lord make his face to shine on us and be gracious to us. And may the Lord look kindly on us and give us his peace.